Hi everyone, Jackie with Full Moon Loon Designs. And you might have seen the first couple of videos, part one and part two, where I worked on these Frit Pile Press pieces. That's the technique that's it's been uh, coined and made these that I want to turn into flowers. So I have had some people ask me to see the process of actually adding the stems. So as you might have seen before, I do have some pieces of cane that I pulled and just organically twisted and, and shaped to make them look more realistic like flower stems. And so I thought I would uh, share my setup. I am going to put the camera on a tripod while I work, but I thought I would share uh, what I do to start getting set up for this. First thing you're gonna want is obviously some type of adhesive. I have found that this stuff works really well. It's the JB Weld Clear Weld. It's a two-part epoxy that you mix and it has about a five minute work time. So you gotta work kind of quick. You don't wanna mix more up than you need at a time. I also like these smaller pieces or the smaller uh, packages because I typically want to use that and then if I'm not gonna use it within the next few days, I'll typically toss it and just use fresh next time. So I've got my adhesive. I have some just uh, craft sticks, popsicle sticks here for when I wanna mix it up. These little purple guys are just some, uh, what do you call it? Not Q-tips, cause they're not the brand, but they're cotton swabs that I've cut the tips off and that'll be what I apply to the flowers. I have my glass flowers, obviously, and what I've done, they look a little rough there and that's because I took them down to the lap grinder and just kind of roughed up the bottoms of them. And I have my stems. Otherwise, I have a pair of nippers here for cutting the cane. I have some painter's tape, and you'll see that during the setup. I have a couple of bottles sitting here. I'll probably end up with one or two more and possibly a roll of paper towel, because as I'm working, I will be propping them up and taping them in place to hold. So I always joke that it's a very high-tech setup, and in this video, I'm gonna include some still shots of past projects I've worked on where I didn't catch any video. So let's get this set up and start working on adding stems. Okay, I think I'm ready to go here. I'm gonna try to make sure that I'm not totally blocking. I am able to pull up the camera view on my watch here, so hopefully you can see what I'm doing. First thing I'm gonna do is mix up some epoxy for my first couple of flowers. And I believe the first one I thought I would do with this longer stem is this one. And again, I have roughed the bottom up. I have cut the, the cane so that it's flat and so that I can make good contact there. So I wanna have a couple of them ready to go so that I'll just mix enough epoxy for those first two. This one is a little bit smaller stem. And I believe I will use that one for this one, this piece. Looks like I may need to smooth that one down a little bit more. I might have to come back to that one. It had a kind of a weird bump on the bottom of it. This one though, it should work. Although, I love just the random curly ones, so maybe if I put it on here, if I cut it about there. Yeah, let's try that. I'm gonna cut it right at one of the bends here and just give it a good snap. Although my stem is a little bit Actually, it looks like it's got a hollow, and I don't think I want to use any with hollows, so I may have to revisit and get a different one. This one might be okay. So hopefully you can see that, kind of like that. So I will mix up enough epoxy to get going with the first ones. I'm using the JB Clear Weld. I have tried a few different things, and I will say I always try to find the 3M type first, but I've had a hard time finding the 3M two-part epoxy. So I am using a JB weld today. First thing I'm gonna do is get rid of this guy here. And then it's got a tip on there to remove. I may have to grab some pliers. Pardon my reach. 
okay not really pliers but it did the job so now i've got it open and all i'm going to do is take it and squeeze maybe about a dime size or so but i want to make sure i get equal amounts of both sides down and sometimes when you first start one it's a little hard to push it through there all right so that is way more than what i need <laughs> So I'm going to pull that back, and now this little guy here that I took off at the beginning, I'm just going to wipe that clean and place that on there just to cap it. So it'll stay good while I'm working on the other pieces. At this point, I am going to mix with a stick. And you probably want to have a nicely ventilated area. Of course, it's winter here, so our windows are all closed. This stuff doesn't smell great, uh, but I'm not going to be hanging out around it for very long. So have it mixed together you want to make sure you get both both things mixed in very well you shouldn't see any big blobs that look more yellow or more clear and I did do a little bit of uh, kind of figuring out where I wanted to set these as I glue them I've got painters tape ready to wrap around them but what I'll be doing most likely is setting one here Attaching it, I'm going to put a paper towel down so I don't run my nice cutting pad here and try to get it in line and tape that to that right there. So, the first thing I'm well, second thing I'm going to do now is grab a piece of tape just for that immediate fastening. I can lay it right there, grab a couple more. I should have pulled my tape first but you get about five minutes or so working time with these and it won't take very long to actually apply so I am going to put down a little bit of protection here just replaced my cutting pad here uh, the one or yeah I think it's called a cutting pad or rotary mat first one I had I accidentally put some heat against it with my easy press I had a pad under it and a towel, but it still warped it. So lesson learned, don't do that on these mats. All right, that's mixed. I am going to take my first one. I have cleaned them. I'll probably clean them again. And I am actually probably going to end up putting a stamen in these, but I wanted to just go ahead and get a video together on actually applying the stems. So I like to use these little Q-tips or cotton swab tips. I just remove the cotton swab and I just I'm pretty generous with getting a blob on it to start and now I'm going to take this and I'm going to hold it in place I hope you can see this and it sometimes I'll have to move it around a little bit to make sure I've got it where I want it meaning it's making good contact with the glass and of course it's going to move while I initially set this up and that's okay because I know about where I want to do that. So now I can start with my uh, rigging. I can call it that. <laughs> I've had so many funny things set up, uh, just holding things in place like this before. But hey, it works. I don't, I don't need any fancy equipment for something like this. I do try to not tape my tape all the way down against the bottle. Because otherwise, I go to take it off and... I may break my flower. So I'm just looking at that. That looks pretty good. It's pretty centered. And usually what I'll do is after it's sat for a minute or so, <clears throat> I'll take a little bit more. I'm not stingy with the epoxy. I mean, you don't want big globs if, they're, if it's going to show. But this stuff does dry clear. That's the one thing I really like about the JB Weld uh, Clear Weld is it dries clear dries somewhat quickly and if I feel like I need a little more even after that set I will add some more later so I got my first one down there and now the next one I've got here roughed up ready to go I'm gonna give it a little test fit here this one rocks a little bit so I just want to make sure I've got it sitting somewhere where it won't move too much and I may have to set something under it like another piece of towel or similar yeah, so this one is more of an angle. Actually, 
actually maybe what's best is to try to butt it up it, it's got these little indents here where it's it uh, folded so maybe the closer I can get it to the bottle yeah I think that'll work I'm gonna grab a piece of paper towel here though and give it a little bit of cushioning underneath You'll find what works for you when you do something like this. And maybe you have a, a really nice setup of, of tools that you can use. I'm just using what I've got and making the best of it. So kind of liking that. Also trying not to bump the other one. All right, there we go. So we like that. I'll go ahead and add some epoxy, and this time I'm just not even going to move it. I'll leave it right there. I can tell it's already starting to set up, and that's actually not a bad thing when you're trying to do this, because then your glass, your stem isn't going to move all over the place quite so easily. I'm going to get my piece of tape ready. Okay, I'm just gonna do this. Yep, I totally moved it off of there. But that's what's nice, once I get it taped down, I can kind of adjust that bottle to where I want it. I can feel it's making pretty good contact. Seems to be pretty well centered in that flat spot. And now, like I did with the first one, I'm gonna take a little bit more. it in. And as I'm working on this video, I'll be starting and stopping. I'll probably skip through a few steps that are going to be just repetitive. Uh, but what I'll show you next is after this is set up. And I like to leave them set for about 24 hours. Sometimes if I'm in a hurry, which is never a good thing when you're trying to create a work of art, uh, I will see that it seems set and I'll go ahead and work on it. Uh, with the next step or adding more epoxy but I'm not in a hurry this weekend I've got some other stuff to work on so I am just gonna let those sit now and come back to them once they have set up or once they have cured I'll be mixing up some fresh epoxy I might be able to get one more in I'll try it here even while I'm on camera yet uh, but I have to find something to set it against so maybe if we do this guy, which is a really nice sized one. I'm liking this stem. And I want to do it so that it's maybe at, a, at an angle almost, or it'll look like it's an angle. This will still be cut straight, I hope. Looks like I got a little chip. I'm not down in my glass space, so if these end up needing a little bit of work, like on the grinder, I'll have to take them downstairs, but I can try one more time to cut. That looks good. I also have to remember to pick up all the little pieces, because this is <laughs> this is upstairs in the living space, and I don't really want to be stepping on glass, so I have a little bit of an angle for this one, so once I attach this... It will be like that. I hope that's showing up on camera. So let me see if I can still work with this. Uh, let's see. We will use... Ah, I've got something I can set it against. A ginormous roll of transfer tape for my other fun adventures when I'm playing with the Cricut. I ordered this because I really wanted to try it and I didn't realize I was getting such a huge roll, but hey, it's not like it's going to expire. Okay, we'll try, let's get the paper towel down, see how this is going to set up. I actually have to move this one out since it is at an angle. Okay, I like 
about there. I almost wonder if I could peel that transfer tape back and just let it stick, but we'll still try it with uh, with some tape. I may add a second second story here, <laughs> something else for it to lean against. Again, find what works. All right, I like that. I think I will go ahead and try taping this down. Now, I haven't tried taping to paper per se. I have taped paper towel. Just don't really want that to move. All right, I'm gonna add some epoxy. Oh, no, I'm not. So once it starts getting really sticky at that point, I would not try to use it anymore, so. We'll just mix up a tiny bit more. And I think I can use maybe the same stick here, it won't hurt. I always say a tiny bit and I end up with more than enough, but. Might be able to squeeze one more in here. We'll see what happens. So I'm adding my glue and then I'm gonna kind of move that into place. That feels like it's making good contact. It looks like it is. Let it sit up for about a minute here. I do have a little bit of issue with the needing another piece of tape. Let's see if I got another roll on hand. Imagine that. I've got more 3M product. <laughs> here. Just the idea is I just really don't want them moving while they're setting up for the next 24 hours. And I will come in and check on them periodically because there's a chance that something could slip out of place. The tape stops holding. You know, it's probably going to depend on like the humidity level in your house, that kind of thing. It does feel like it's touching all the way. So I'll take, I'll just use this finer tip here. already setting up. The setup time is probably going to vary as well depending on your climate conditions. But I've had good luck using this. I've used it on my roses. I'll try to get a picture of those again, a newer picture. They're sitting not too far from here. I've used it on the tiger lily I made recently. I've used it attaching irises together. So yeah, it works works pretty well. And for stems, I've had it work really well. So that's the setup, the initial setup. Looks like they're all staying put. So when I come back, uh, I'm gonna work on these. I'm gonna grind the bottom of the other one. And then probably, hopefully this time tomorrow, maybe a little bit earlier, but probably around the 20 to 24 hour mark, I'll take a look at them if they seem dry. I may add a little bit more epoxy, but otherwise I'll show you what they look like. So I was planning to speed up the video through some of these steps, but I just wanted to mention, you'll see sometimes, depending on your space, you might struggle a little bit with how to get these set up. What I don't want to have happen is this one falls over and just starts <laughs> knocking everything down like dominoes. This one, because it's got such a curve here, it's a little bit harder to find something for it to lean against. But I think I see something might move out of camera shot here but just trying to find a place where I can set it up and let it sit 
to set, set to set. All right. It's about there. I might even try to see if I can clamp this piece. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Well, maybe it will, let's see. Nope. There we go. Now that my epoxy is probably starting to set, nope, it's still pretty workable. So now that I've got it in a good spot, and I am gonna add some tape, because I don't trust that the clamp is gonna hold it because it's just really running through it. And this is in kind of an awkward spot for me to see, so I probably more than likely will have to come back through here and add some tomorrow. Try to bump it just a little bit. Okay, I smart and pulled a few pieces of tape. Of course, now I'm bumping it out of place, trying to tape it in place. A little forgiving until it really starts to set so that one's probably going to be just fine there this one i might be able to lean against here the longer <clears throat> excuse me the longer your stems are the more finagling you're probably going to have to do. So this is going to work somewhere at best about there. I'm going to go ahead and give it this first piece of tape just to hold that. And I didn't grab one of my other smaller sticks. This is working for now. I have a little bit more base area here to play with. If you're working with tiny pieces, yeah, you'll want to use something like the cotton swab tips or sticks. Okay. So that's holding there somewhat. All right. I'm going to add another piece of tape. I have actually knocked them out of place just trying to tape them down to main thing is you just want to make sure that your surfaces are contacting each other so that when that epoxy starts to set the that's gonna set where you want it so that one looks good and now I have just one more but I've heard some tape moving so that should be good this guy, I did go down and took the grinder to it just a bit more, and I must have misplaced my stem that I have for it. So I had a little mishap as I went to grind just a tiny bit more off of this one. I think you can see that hole went through it. So rather than trying to fit my cane in there, I just took a dot of a whole variety of these and what I'm going to do is glue that down in there first and then once that's set and secure then I've got more base here. The stem will actually go maybe a little under this lip here and then attach more to the yellow uh, but I just wanted to share that. hope you can see that. So I'll be putting that in there and epoxying that first and then I'll add the stem. So with this piece here that I need to put the little dot into the center, I didn't want to just set it down because my epoxy is going to go through and stick to anything. So I just found a little, one of these tiny little shot glass sized or I'm not even sure what they're called. Something from the Dollar Tree, I'm sure. So I'll just set it in there and then put this down in there. So it's time to mix up more of this fun stuff.
And like always, I put too much out, but that's all right. I am going to be a little bit generous with this because I don't mind if some of it runs out. I've got somewhat of a base in there, but then there's the hole. And of course it is going to drip right out when I first put it in there. But I'm mostly trying to make sure that I'm getting some along the sides of that opening so that this dot will just sit in place. Now, I just know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna drop it in there and it's gonna go in upside down. So maybe a pair of tweezers would be smart. There we go. So hopefully you can see that somewhat. This was probably my favorite one too out of all of them. I think it's between this one and the other blue one. I just love the shape of this one. And this is the one that was over the sidewalk chop. So I'm going to take just a little more epoxy here. I do have some on the top of the dot, but I'm not gonna worry too much about it. This one will probably end up just being mine. <laughs> So I'm going to let that one sit before I put a stem. So the stem probably won't even go on to this one until tomorrow. Uh, but I do have the dot set in there now. And I'm going to move the camera and give you a closer look at everything. I already did have my tape come undone on the back one there. All right. So here's this guy kind of clamped and leaning against that. This one is taped to the masking roll. This one is taped to that as well as a couple rolls of painter's tape here. Here's the one I just put the dot in. As you can see, that's not super neat, but uh, it'll, it'll end up being mine. <laughs> and then these guys are set up against a couple spray bottles. So I'm going to very carefully walk away from the table and come back to these tomorrow after they've had a chance to set up and see how they're looking. So it hasn't quite been 24 hours since I glued these together, but they're looking pretty good. And I thought I would just kind of show what they look like attached. Let's see if I can flip this one over. And there's certainly no harm in going over them with another bead of the epoxy. I probably will do that later. Uh, I wanted to show a couple ways you could do something once you have them on stems. This is very crude, but I just took a, one of my little four inch pots I bought for vitrograph actually, and I have a piece of foam in there, and then I just stuck two of them down in there. So as you can see, there's still lots of things you could do with them. You can add leaves. Um, you could add some decorative moss or rocks around them. Um, I probably will do both <laughs> when I finally finish the project, but I do have a couple of examples of more finished projects. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind, especially if you have anything very large or heavy, you don't want these to be heavier. Like this would probably easily tip over because right now all I have in there is that piece of foam. You can add a uh, weight in the bottom of it. You could put rocks in there. You could do a few different things. Uh, but what I did with my tiger lily, that's this one here that I did last summer, is I actually put a spray foam in there and then I put a piece of uh, this type of foam, the green floral foam, over it. I bought this stuff. It's made by Great Stuff. It's an expanding floral film filler. I got it, I believe at Joann's and I wouldn't have bought it without like the 40 or 50% off that I got because it was pretty expensive. But I was in there one day when I was looking for the foam to put on the top and some moss and I thought, hey, this might actually work for adding the weight and adding stability because I really wanted to put my leaves and my uh, cane, my, my flower piece in there and not just have it move around in the foam as it can do uh, if you're just using a piece of styrofoam. So what I did was I filled it uh, 
probably about a third, probably more than that, probably about half uh, using this expanding foam. Worked great because it starts setting up. Um, I was able to put my foam on top of it and then push my pieces down in. Now, granted, the leaves really are just kind of stuck in the styrofoam, but that cane goes all the way down into that foam. And then once it dried, um, it, it, the cane doesn't move anymore. A word of caution, if you have a pot like this one that has a hole in the bottom of it, because it's actually an outdoor pot, uh, make sure that you have something under it and don't just have it sitting on maybe your table surface or anything nice. Um, I did have a piece of cardstock under mine and I was glad because when this stuff continued to expand, it did push out the bottom a little bit. So I had to do a little bit of cleanup on the bottom. But if you're using a closed pot, you should have no issue. This set of roses I did, uh, I think it was back in 2019, and I've got some photos I'm going to be sharing at the end of the video here on some different setups. Uh, but in this one, I really did just use foam. I think I cut a couple of pieces and put down in there and then just put some rocks and not only rocks, but actual glass river rocks that I put down in there. So that's another way to finish. And also I wanted to mention, so this tiger lily, was epoxied the same exact way that I just did the flowers earlier in the demo, as were these roses. And not only are the stems connected with the epoxy, but also those base pieces. So obviously I draped the roses and then I draped these base uh, green pieces of the leaves. And then to put them together, I used the epoxy. So another use there. And then these are the guys from yesterday, or more of them from yesterday. I, I love, just love that shape. So I really want to put some leaves with that one. Here's the one that's more, just a little ripple. And you do want to be careful handling them the first, you know, again, these probably aren't quite cured. And then this is another one with a really cool organic shape. So I could see that with some leaves would be nice. And then of course these two guys here, I'm calling them guys, they're big ladies. I mean, they're flowers, they're delicate, they're beautiful. So that is, I, I didn't get to this one yet, so I still have to attach that, but I'm gonna be doing the same process, so nothing, nothing you'll miss there. But I wanted to add a little blurb about this, uh, the great stuff, film, film, I can't even say it, floral foam filler. Try saying that a few times. It worked great and uh, no pun intended on the on the name there, but I really think you could have done the same thing much cheaper. So I thought I would do just a little check this morning and here you can see this is at Michael's. It's $17.99 a can. Here is, and it's a 12 ounce can. Here is by the same company. It's the great stuff, crack, Gaps and Cracks, another foam filler. It's just maybe not going to be the same color, but if you're going to cover it with rocks or moss, it doesn't really matter. So this $17.99 for a 12 ounce can. What do you suppose this is? $3.19. So definitely uh, try that. You know, you might try it with just a small project, something like this. You could fill that bottom third or half with foam, put your uh, styrofoam on top and then add your moss or however you want to finish it off. But anyway, I hope this has been helpful. I know there were some folks that wanted to see me actually attaching the stems and it, it's really not anything truly difficult. The main things are, the main key points I can say are make sure that you have good contact between both surfaces. So you may need to rough up your glass or you know sand it down just so that it's flat. You have a flat spot to connect the cane. Use a good adhesive. Again, this one has worked for me. I have used a couple others, uh, but I, this is the one that I typically come back to and I, I like that it dries clear. And uh, foam, if you're gonna use it, try the cheaper stuff. But otherwise, I hope some of you will try this process. I would love to see what you do. I don't really have a way for you to share your photos on my YouTube channel, but you can certainly join my Full Moon Loon Designs or follow me there on my artist page on Facebook and you can post pictures or send me photos of the work that you do. As always, thanks for watching and here will be a few more photos of pieces that I have uh, set up to epoxy in the past.